Elysium fronting for the Court of Consciousness system right now. We wanted to talk about the video game Baldur's Gate 3, which we recently purchased and acquired. Um, it took Lewis about three days of setting it up, and we had to buy an external SSD to be able to play it. It was about $60 for the game itself, $100 for an SSD to play it. Um, this is a very, uh, expensive purchase for us because, um, we actually don't, we had to save up to, to be able to get that and, uh, usually don't have money to, to get such things. But after seeing snippets and stuff of the game on YouTube, what drew us to it was we're like, oh, it seems kind of sort of like Skyrim, except there's like built in romantic features, at least is what it kind of looked like from the snippets that kept showing up on our feed. And so we're like, well, that kind of sounds like right up our alley. And it's based on Dungeons & Dragons universe. We have played some Dungeons & Dragons. We're not, like, super into it. But we got the game. And one of the things that made us happy we got the game uh, was that we saw when we were searching for, like, help with the bugs we were experiencing getting it running that some <laughs> someone online in the in like the steam comments or something because we were just trying to see if anyone else was having the bug we didn't find anyone with it but uh someone had said that it, it's a woke game to name just like one white character in the game who owns like a substantial portion of land and i'm just like i i don't understand <laughs> like that is such like a white supremacist take is like it's based on dungeons and dragons like, what, what do you want? <laughs> and then, apparently more white land-owning video game characters, like, okay, bro. Um, and then someone else said, some other guy said that, like, uh, oh, gosh, what was it? It was, like, it, the that it's harder to romance the woman characters in the game than the guys, and that the guys practically fling themselves at the player characters, but the women are more reserved or like standoffish. And I'm like, ah, very glad I got this game. Then, <laughs> and, yep, okay, that's for me then. Uh, and it, another thing. So far, because um, it seems like the kind of game where they kind of want you to pick a favorite character. Uh, we thought we were going to like, just from like the art and like the, because we didn't know anything about the game going into it. We thought we were going to like Astorian, but actually they're a whiny little bitch and we don't like them. So far, our favorite character by far and like immediately we knew we liked this character, but we thought it would change. We thought we wouldn't like them as much, but our absolute favorite character in the entire game is uh, Gale, is Definitely Gale, and we're still pretty close to the beginning, we feel like, although, um, possible, potential spoiler warning for this part, uh, but we we have gotten to the part where it talks about, like, that he has, um, uh, like, uh, the, like, the curse or whatever he has with the, with the weave stuff, and, uh, his, uh, partner god is stuff going on, but, like, we're not very far in the game, we just reached, I think, the temple, or, like, the monk temple, and we're at like level four or five, I think. <laughs> and but so far, he's our, he's definitely our favorite character. And we we didn't realize that the game tells you when like someone like wants to talk to you. So we kept going up to the to the character, like hoping there would be new dialogue, and there, <laughs> and there wasn't. We'd be disappointed every time. It's like that's not how it works. You have to like wait for the game to like do that itself, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's enjoyable so far. We like the game. And we thought actually that Shadow Heart was going to be our least favorite because at first we're like, ugh, this, this lady is so emo <laughs> and annoying. But then when she starts talking about like how she has amnesia at one part, we're like, oh, we're a DID system and part of our plurality involves dissociative amnesia. And we're like, okay, we can actually relate to that because we're like, ugh. It's like simplistic disability representation, but then it gets into it and we're like, no, actually we can kind of relate to that. And so we like that character as well. Um, we think all the characters are pretty good. Astorian's definitely our least favorite just because he's kind of a jerk. <laughs> and we like Gale because the biggest reason we like Gale though, and again, this video might have a little tiny bit of spoilers, but um, we're only at like level four. So, but 
another thing we like is that he talks about how like he thought you guys were gonna like kick him out of the group or something for like when he's when he expresses the stuff with like why he needs to absorb magic and that his like lust for power as a wizard drove him to make poor choices and how like the um I don't even know, like, Mystria or whatever god, um, he was, like, betting them, and, like, he was sharing his bed with the god, yet still wasn't happy and wanted to, like, prove himself even further to them, and that's how he got the, like, curse from absorbing a part of the weave, and that part really spoke to us, because we are a wizard, our DID system is literally a wizard like not role playing or anything we're actually a witch we do witchcraft we speak to spirits we actually consider our headmates spirits and um that whole thing with like his his struggle there and his struggle with being so highly favored by a goddess he looks up to but also feeling like really bad that in his pursuit to honor them he sort of like hurt himself and um, it became perhaps sort of a burden because of that. And honestly, a lot of the characters, it feels a lot like uh, analogies or allegories for disability. And I, I really like that, actually. I thought I wasn't going to like that because Shadow Heart seemed annoying or cliche to me at first. But now that I'm thinking about it, I was like, actually, it really does seem disability coded. And I really like that. <laughs> but also just like as an actual wizard, I really appreciate Gale. And I feel like usually wizard representation in media pisses us the fuck off. Like usually witchcraft and wizards and all that stuff in fictional media is very annoying, is very overly simplistic, is just garbage, essentially. But his personality, I feel like, in the way he is, actually is relatable to us as a wizard. And... Um, so far, we're really enjoying the game, and I guess we just wanted to share that.